Hi guys, PJ here. Today I am working on a 2009 Toyota iGo. And what we're going to be doing is removing the original radio and fitting a double DIN radio into this slot. Now at first glance you'll notice it doesn't even look big enough to hold a double DIN, but fascia kits are available so you can do it. And we are using this one by Connex 2. There we go. So we've got CT23TY23, and this is obviously for the Peugeot, Toyota, Citroen, as you can see, because they are all the same car. And here it is. Nice kit, works very well. Has side plates for mounting the radio. So you don't use the cage that comes with your new radio, you use these instead. And so, in other words, we get our radio. In this case, we got a Sony, what is it, WX920BT. There we go. And basically, these fit on the side here, screw into the holes. And the front of it mounts into the rear of the fascia panel, which I will show you later on. First things first, we've got to remove this. And you start by pulling off this knob. Now, if it doesn't come off, you would be advised to use a plastic leverage tool. Uh, something like one of these things, you just pop it behind it and sort of lever it off. Revealing Phillips screw. Now, I do have another video on my channel showing you how to remove the radio on an iGo. So, uh, you can refer to that for more detail if need be. But basically, we removed the screw. And then from there on out, it's all on poppers. So we basically get our leverage tool under it. If it's a bit stuck like this one was, get your leverage tool at the top here and prise that way on both corners. Because when you pull it forward, you'll notice plastic tabs that lock into these. So you've got to sort of pull it forward to get it free. There you go, and you can sort of pull it out and lean it forward. Uncouple your connectors at the back there and remove the entire fascia. So we've undone the radio connectors first. They plug into the back of the radio. They're on squeezy tabs, so you just basically pinch them and pull. The aerial connector is a push fit, so that's very easy to pull it clean off. And then on the back, you're left with three coloured blocks. So when you put them back on, you cannot get them in the wrong order. Again, you just push the tab down, pinch and pull on each one to actually remove them from the fascia. Now, I'm going to need both hands just to hold the fascia while I pull them all off, but you get the gist. It's very, very straightforward. Next up, we need to move or remove. Hang on, sorry. Sorry guys, still getting used to my new camera there. That was the wrong way around. We've got to remove this strip here to go into the new one. So if we turn this over, you'll notice they're on pinch tabs. Just squeeze and push forwards and the assembly will fall out the front. So put your hand under it to catch it, but they're on little squeezy tabs, look. So pinch, push forwards. There we go, there's our connectors. Or plugs rather, all removed from the holes. We're also going to need to remove these blue clips. Now these just pop on, so you can either put a little flat blade screwdriver behind them and pull them off, or just wiggle them loose. You're going to need them to put, slide over the tabs on the new trim. Next up, we are back to the recess area when you removed your blue class plastic clips there. And what we are going to do is basically cut here, here, and here. And that will remove this piece once you've removed this Phillips screw. Now I'm gonna leave the screw in until I've finished cutting, because obviously without it, it's gonna shake around when you get to the last one. So get yourself a um, you know, reasonable cutting tool and basically start sawing through the plastic. So it cuts all the way through on all three. Now bear in mind, you've got cables everywhere. So whatever you do, make sure the end of the blade at the back doesn't go through a cable or a pipe. So take a lot of care keep feeling behind it where you're cutting. I mean, there's nothing behind any of this here, but there are cables further back, as you can see. So keep your blade short when you're actually cutting, yeah? Take your time on this part. Safety first, as you can see, I've wrapped electrical tape around the end of my blade there. And we're all nice and safe. Not actually holding it there, of course, but still, sort of point that out. So cut all the way through it. Now there's no going back from this, as you can imagine. So 
bear that one in mind. So uh, if you want to put the original stereo back in, you are going to have considerable fun. Right, we've made our three incisions. And we're now going to remove the mounting screw, which will release this huge chunk of plastic and make room for your new double din radio. Obviously, if you fit in a single din, please refer to my other video before you start cutting your car up. There we go. Let's pop that out of the way. Don't need that anymore. Now we have this huge gap ready to put the new radio in, which is ideal. So before we do that, we've got to mount the plastic plates on the sides of the new radio so that they slot in and connect to the new fascia. So this is the rear of the new fascia. Comes with this trim. Simply lay the trim in the recess like so. Grab your new radio and plonk it on like so. So it falls through the hole and sort of sits neatly flush with the edges. We're then going to get our plastic strips, line them up with the holes here, screw them into the three holes on the side. That's what your finished mounted item should look like. So it's all nice and flush around the edge with no gap. On the rear, there we go. There's three little mounting screws here and then one, two, here. So make sure you slide the radio forward just a little bit, look, so that it actually sits flush against the plastic, otherwise you'll have a couple of millimetre gap around the edge. So you'll notice it's not all the way back there on that slider, it's a little bit forward on this one, look. Then we've got another screw here just to hold it, same on the other side. And then we can go ahead now and start clipping our three switches or blanking plates in here, whichever you have, and also popping on these little blue things which just shove on like so. Now if you forgot what order these go in, don't worry because like I said earlier, they're colour coded, you can't really get it wrong. So go ahead, put all those in, connect everything up. All three clicked in. Now you can't actually get them in the wrong slots by the way because there's little lugs on them. So you literally can't get left and right the wrong way around. The centre one's pretty obvious anyway, it's a different shape. So we're just going to finish putting our blue bits on and then we're ready to start connecting things up. So here's our current stage. Like I say, three connectors all plugged in and clicked in there for the fascia. All the blue tabs are on. We've clicked in the wire that comes with your new radio. Straight ISO, plug straight on nice and easy. This particular Sony radio, like a lot of Sonys do, comes with a aerial adapter, female to male, normal aerial adapter. If your radio does not come with this, because an awful lot of them don't, you can buy these from eBay, Amazon, car accessory shops. They're normally sort of a pound, two pounds tops. So uh, very easy to find this is. Like I say, it's a female to male converter. And all it does is shove in like so, so that you can actually plug it into here, this slot. And then obviously this goes into here. On this particular radio, we've got a microphone as well. So there's the jack plug for that, which will be going in the mic socket. Uh, we've run this cable down the back here, underneath the glove box area, cable tied it up so it doesn't fall down, up the A pillar behind the rubber trim, and then along the headline in and I've basically mounted it above the interior mirror so it's uh, free from noise, because if you mount it near your side window, when you put your side window down and you're driving along, if somebody does ring and you're on a call, we can't hear you for the noise turbulence from the wind. So always put them in the middle if the cable is long enough. So like I say, above the rear view mirror is fine. So we're just gonna plug all this in now, and then we're gonna sort of mount the whole assembly by pushing it into these lugs. So like I've just said, we've shoved it in, lined everything up, we've not clicked it fully home yet, okay? Reason for that is we're going to do a simple test to make sure it actually works. Even though it's a brand new radio, it's always best to test them. So ignition on, and there we go, that's ready for setting up, I'll tell it what area we're in, etc. But as long as it powers up everything, and if you want to try it, save a radio station to a preset, make sure it remembers it. And turn your ignition back off again and basically start clicking all of these connectors in as you can see i'm not having to push very firmly line them all up click them all in once in don't forget to put your mounting screw back in behind the uh, heater knob there give that a bit of a tighten job done and lastly heater knob itself and there we go 
And that's it. Guys, that is how you put a double DIN radio in a Toyo Trigo or similar equivalent techie pick, really. Like I said, I do recommend using the uh, installation kit. It makes life very, very easy and it looks rather factory fit. I'm sure you'll agree. Looks quite nice, that does. No gap around the edge there. Any questions, pop them in the comments below. I do my best to answer you as quickly as possible, but do bear with me. I get inundated with questions every single day, so it might not be an instant reply. Thank you very much for watching. If it was any help, give me a thumbs up and goodbye for now.